This particular landing point used to be a busy, busy, busy place. Well, a lot of fish used to land in Gunju, and a lot of fish used to be transported all the way to Banjul, Bakau, Fajara, ba you name it, Serekunda. Well, things are different now. And most of the fishermen that used to bring good catch are no longer coming with these catches because they are competing with trawlers that are fishing so close to the nine nautical mile, which is an, a restricted area for commercial fishing. That's where artisanal boats used to do their fishing. Now the trawlers are encroaching into that space, thereby making life difficult for the artisanal and traditional fishermen and fisherfolk to catch fish and bring to the communities. The types of nets being used by those fishing trawlers is making it virtually impossible for them to land a catch. And before they go out at sea, they have to spend quite a lot of money buying petrol. They have to prepare themselves and coming back empty is definitely not worth their while. The government has arrested many, many boats, but most of the time they do have an out of court settlement. And in this out-of-court settlement, there is induced corruption by these Chinese folks. So it's cheaper for the Chinese folks to fish within the nine-mile zone. They don't have to burn a lot of fuel, and they can pay a fine once they charge. But that is putting the livelihoods of the traditional and artisanal fishermen at risk. Wow. Si vous voulez que vous ayez un bac, vous pouvez vous faire des choses. 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 Vous pouvez vous faire des Diko jap, bun ko jap, bun ye, bun ko jaya nyun deser. Boko jen desi nyun purge jar ko. Deser no kumuna jaya dogin. Galun dawi lagi, nenek nyun fini don waran apa leg mana pun saya. Indah batoi. Batoi mas. Wah batoi mas. Dengan ya kesen balik, mautah lagi nyun metu nyun faidem. Fini nyun metu nyun faman amjen bubun. Nyal aku la kole ya kaya tina. Nyun muna garin olet. Hai nang aman olet dokuje. Ya infaru media. Kabiri nyun tongkong. Fase saja. Nga beke man wallet. Mine wano kwa minyela soto kwa liya wale atini. Ni mkulu wale tata bako no. Ni jamfata do mandi. Dami ntoe kanyo soto je. Bato wale tata je. So the story remains the same. The frustration remains the same. There is lack of regulation. Lack of enforcement. Due to corruption and ineptitude. And this is causing the lives and livelihoods of people who rely 
on the resources coming out of the sea for a sustainable livelihood. Voila, this is Golden Lead. Golden Lead is infamous for what is, it has done to the environment of South Combo, especially Gunjur and its environs. Golden Lead is a fish meal company, a company that makes animal food. Fish meal is animal food, mostly shipped to Southeast Asia, China, Vietnam, and other countries. There's always a paradox. There's always an irony. There's always things that are said but not practiced. I came here and I met um, this board fixed here and I'm just looking at this board. The more I look at the board, the more I get confused because the environment that I am around is not reflective of what the board is stating. The board states no catching, landing, marketing of juvenile fish. If you go against the juvenile catching, landing and marketing, legal action may be taken against you. So no to catching, landing and marketing of juvenile fish. I just walk a few steps, just a few steps from where I was. And what do I see? Schools of juvenile fish. Fish that haven't been given the chance to grow. This means that someone is using an illegal net. Illegal net in the sense that whatever is catching these fish or fishes are not meant to be out there for the simple fact that this is too small to be brought to land. So the board is stating one thing. Here I am standing here. This is what I see policy failure once again. See, time be, uh, uh, see, I'd be passed in the one of you two. I'm been a papel. Nous avons fait des choses qui nous ont 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 fait you choses qui nous ont fait des 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 choses qui nous ont fait through the through to the you know to the river to the side. side. So when all, any rubbish you know they don't need it, they throw it to the riverside. So the river became to be you know like yellow color. And through that yellow color you will see some of small fish are dying and you know I mean the river even himself will be you know I mean drying you know totally dry. I even came with my wife, you know I mean she is from Netherlands. She was telling me, you know I mean this what what is what the f is going on? You know, all the beaches smelling bad. I say, oh, it's because of this factory. And that smell is too dangerous. Yeah. When you heal that, you know, it can give you something else. You see now, you want because to go Because when they start... Well, I didn't be the tennis here. Yeah. He's not mad to go and treat Of course. Right now, these fisher folks have just landed their catch and most, if not all, are bringing bonga or sardinella and this is the poor man's protein. Fortunately for this time of the year, most of the fish meal factories are not in operation. Therefore, some of this catch will end up in someone's table and someone's bowl as their protein meal. But in the coming weeks and months, 
the Chinese factories will be fully operational and all of this is going to be sold to the Chinese factories and the poor Gambian once again will revert to eating chicken legs as a means and a source of protein for them. This is why we want the government to step in and play a role to make sure that the average Gambian household happen to have a good source of protein on a daily basis and this is a better source of protein than the frozen imported chicken legs that are coming in country. Generally, we have laws in our books that when trawlers are caught fishing in the restricted zone, they have to pay a fine. But what we have seen in recent times is that the ministry has been doing quite a lot of out-of-court settlements. And these out-of-court settlements literally are just a slap on the wrist for these Chinese boat owners. Because if they have to fish out of the nine nautical miles, they will tend to spend more money and their turnaround time won't be quicker. So they take the risk of fishing in this nine nautical mile zone that's totally designed for the artisanal fishermen and now there's been a lot of out-of-court settlements and perceived inducement slash corruption by our public officials. Golden Lead owns vessels and we have seen Golden Lead vessels being arrested and more so we have seen Golden Lead vessels paying a token sum for being arrested. And moreover, we have on record Gambian public officials taking a bribe or taking an inducement from these Chinese. I'll let you guys listen to this audio and you be the George. Good morning, Honorable. Wow, wow, that's a problem. Wow, so many a guy. Hello? I don't know my hundred. I don't know my hundred pounds. You need to talk to me. Wow, so what? Okay. So what now then the gravity of the crime? Wow, and then the blue loose or a very been in the air, been our new part alone. To keep this. Tell him to keep this for yes. all right. I will mm. tell the minister because this I will share with the minister. Mm. This, if I should take, mm, yeah. I will give half minister. Mm. Like we said, our fish stocks. Well, according to the officials from the Ministry of Fisheries, they're not dwindling. He said, whatever it's happening is sustainable. But I was privy to get footage from the Golden Lead factory. And once again, I'll let you be the judge whether if the amounts of sardinella and bonga being processed at, those, um, at that factory in Gunjur is happening twice, three times a week, whether that's a sustainable business. It's not for me to say, it's for you to be the judge. Look at this footage.
equally. Look at this piece of letter. A letter from a staff, an observer, an observer who is on board a vessel, who has complained to his superiors that the vessel he has been on board, walking, has been fishing within the nine-mile restricted zone reserved for our artisanal fishermen. The gentleman wrote to his superiors and not much has been done. See for yourself once again. With all these systemic roadblocks, bottlenecks faced within the sector, the environmental pollution going on, who is going to bail the cart? Who is going to stand up and fight for our environment? Who is going to be the game changer and the difference maker? This is why Gambia Uncharted has decided to come out and instead of not only showcasing the good of this country, we showcase the ills that will threaten the good of this country. And that is our tourism portfolio, our tourism infrastructure, our tourism destinations. We ought to speak up. What if a citizen, a concerned Gambian, mm -hmm. happens to have incontrovertible evidence mm -hmm. of collusion, corruption, mm -hmm. and someone exploiting our resources unabated? Where should we take it if we feel like the people we are having issue with are the Ministry of Fisheries? Where should we take it? I want to know. I cannot answer that question. No, I cannot answer that question.